So if I take you into the actual comp script, one of the key things, we, we decided to render uh, OpenEXR, and Nuke handles OpenEXR so well in that all the artists can see all of their layers here. Um, one of the things we did, we decided in order to take some burden off lighting and put it into the hands of the compositors because it's so much faster turnaround to, to let compositors tweak things, we were going to duplicate Houdini's shader structure in the Nuke comp. So we rendered out each individual light, uh, rendered out you know constant pass, ambient occlusion, all that stuff, and recombined them in Nuke the way Houdini would have combined them in its own renderer. So because every shot had a different amount of lights, it could be as little as four, it could be as many as 15, we wanted the artist to be able to just quickly see, okay, I've got all these extra lights. And by looking at the EXR, the drop-down in the Nuke viewer, you can see, okay, in this one I've only got two auxiliary lights. I've got the basic lights and then some auxiliaries. And that made it so much more efficient. You didn't have to rely on a lighter making sure to tell the compositor, okay, we've got this many extra lights. They can go in and see for themselves. If you look here, I can show you how we, uh, we separated out the lights. In addition to separating out each individual light, we wanted to have the compositors have that much more control. So here you can see I've got a key light. I'm going to make this a little bigger for you. Here's our key light. But in addition to that, we rendered out the lights without any shadows. Then we rendered out the shadows themselves so that we could subtract those shadows from the lights and get the basic light. Um, we could then go in, say the shadow is too dark, we'll go in, we'll just fade that out a little bit so that we have that much more control. We don't have to go back to the lighter and say, you've got too much shadow here, we could take care of it ourselves. And even more than that, we could go in and you know, this shadow is coming just a little bit too far down his forehead, we could go in and tweak it with a roto. You know, just cut out a little bit more shadow. And it saved us a lot of time. We, we could have our team of lighters continue lighting shots rather than make revisions. And with 300 shots and a small team, relatively small team of lighters, you know, it was important that they keep working. So um, I can show you in the actual comp where I've gone in and tweaked this shot with color corrects and with beziers to roto out various areas of shadow. In this case, it was for contact shadows where he grabs his mask. Um, this shot here, so you can see he's got all these contact shadows under his hands. Now, we didn't want to have to make our match animation team. They were already dealing with the tracking of the head, jaw movement, stuff like that. We didn't want to have to make them suddenly put in hands and try and get the shadows accurate that way. So we decided we'll do it in the comp. Um, now, normally, the easiest way to do that would be you know, do a luminance key of the plate and put those back in. And on a lot of shots, that worked just fine. But you can see in this plate, they've got a stand-in ink blot in there. So as soon as you do a luminance key, you're getting shadow combined with ink blot. And suddenly you're going to have to go in and roto stuff anyway. It's no good. So what we ended up doing, I can go back here, is just tracking in rotos. We tracked his hands and we were able to, to track in rotos and clone those rotos so that they could be applied to all the lights. So, or at least all the lights we needed to cut those out of. So that ends up giving us a pretty nice shadow once we get that in there. It gives us a fairly good representation of the shadow. We're cutting out those fingers out of the lights we want to cut them out and not cutting them out of others, rather than doing a color correct on the whole thing. Um, that ended up working pretty well. Um, one thing, if I show you the beauty render again, we had done a lot of uh, look dev work on it. And one thing we noticed when we were looking at the actual fabric mask that Jackie was wearing was that it had all these little fibers coming off it, like it had been washed a lot of times. So you got a lot of, if I show you the plate, you got a lot of these little hairs coming off, and it really helps to sell the shot. So we definitely, we put those into 
we put those into the into the shot into the the shader. The problem was when we rendered out the individual lights from Houdini, they tended to not show up in the individual light renders. So you can see here we've got a few little hairs, but compared to the beauty render, not nearly so many. So when we go to multiply these lights against the constant pass to recreate what Houdini is doing, it ends up cutting out all those hairs. Because regardless of the fact you've got them in the alpha, it's not in the color, and so the color multiplication is just, it, it's cutting it right out. So we could have spent more time trying to figure out how to get Houdini to do it, but we decided a really cheap, quick fix would be to take those renders and we'll take our combined lighting and blur it out, right? So which takes all the light that we had and the light and the color and takes it out past the edge of the, the face. And then we merged our proper lighting back over top of it. So that when we finally go and multiply that over top of the constant pass, lo and behold, we've got all of our hairs again. So it's a cheap fix and it's down and dirty, but it works and it saves a lot of time.